This is a comprehensive demo using Cirrus Protect Cloud, or CPC, running at AWS. Through software-only MTDI agents deployed at each host at the on-premises data center, we can deliver continuous data protection of the on-premises hosts with CDP any point in time recovery plus point in time snapshot recovery. This solution can facilitate DR tests at the AWS cloud, DR stand-in in case of a disaster at the on-premises data center, and recovery from the AWS cloud back to the on-premises data center. The first step is to deploy the MTDI agent at each source host at the on-premises data center. Let's look at the source host. This is the Windows 2016-122 host running a SQL 2019 instance. This is the SQL Server Management Studio. The main database files are stored in drive D and the log is stored in drive L. These are the source disks we're going to protect using the MTDI agents. An exact copy of these disks is made at the CPC AWS instance, and subsequently, all the new writes to these disks are continuously delivered by the MTDI agent to the CPC, where a continuous data protection journal records them all for future any point in time recovery. Snapshots are also taken periodically. The MTDI agent is deployed by running a single command at the Windows PowerShell command prompt. This action pulls the latest MTDI code from our online code repository. The MTDI agent is then installed in less than a minute, and it's done. Now we need to obtain a registration key for the CPC instance at AWS. To do that, we open the Web Management GUI for CPC and click on Home, Data Sources, MTDI Software, MTDI Agents. Then click the red menu circle at the bottom right of the screen and select Obtain Registration Key. Copy this key to the buffer for the next step. Now go back to the Windows desktop. Execute the MTDI EXE command to register the key to the AWS instance with its public IP. And there should be two dashes here, so let's fix that. OK, it's done. Next, we need to register the same key with the on-premises Linux host. Let's open up a PuTTY session to connect to the Linux host at 172.23.60.121 and log in as dbadmin. Execute lsblk to see the list of block devices. It shows that sdb is the device that's mounted on the dbadmin slash data directory. This mount point is where the PostgreSQL Sample Patient Records database stores the data. So SDB is the device to be protected with the CPC policy. So let's start up the database. And let's add 100 records to the database with this script. We can launch a web browser to connect to this database instance. And see there are 200 records in the database so far. Here we execute a Linux curl command to download and install the MTDI agent. Just like the Windows version, it takes less than a minute to complete, requires no user interaction, and can be deployed by any enterprise remote management tool or software deployment tool. Once the service has started, we can register with the MTDI register command, given the public IP of the CPC AWS instance and the registration key. And it would probably help if we spelled register correctly, so let's fix that too. And registration is complete. Back to the web GUI for CPC, we now see that there are two hosts registered with this CPC instance. So let's start with the Windows host to select the Discover Disks to be protected. Use the red menu and select Insert New MTDI Device. There are three devices discovered. We'll insert drive D and drive L one at a time. Once they're inserted, the MTDI agent will monitor every write and can copy blocks of the device to CPC at AWS. The next step is to create a protection policy at the Copy Data Management, or CDM, page. Data protection and recovery is one of the many functions of CDM. Use the red menu to select Create New CDM Policy, click on MTDI Backup Policy, and give it a name, 
and a description, and select Asynchronous Continuous Mode. In this mode, all writes are immediately sent to the CPC instance after they're compressed and encrypted. We now add the disks to be part of this policy by selecting drives D and L. We also need to specify at least one CDM action. There are five default actions which take a snapshot at various intervals, such as every 15 minutes, every hour, every two weeks, etc. Each of them has an appropriately set retention period. It's possible to archive the old snapshots to AWS S3 for long-term retention at a much lower cost. Each action can optionally replicate the disks to another CPC instance at another location. You can delete any of these actions or create your own. For now, we'll simply enable all of them. We can now activate the policy. Once activated, all the disks in the policy will be mirrored asynchronously to a corresponding, fully deduped virtual disk at the CPC. A CDP journal will retain the most recent writes to enable any point-in-time recovery, and snapshots will be created and deleted based on the settings and policy actions. Here's a visual representation of the dirty map. When the initial sync is started, every bit is set. As blocks are copied to CPC, the red bits are wiped out. But if there are new writes to the disk, the bits will be set again, and the corresponding blocks will again be copied. This sequence repeats until all blocks are in sync and no more dirty bits remain in the map. The disks are then in the mirroring state for continued async mirroring operations. Now drive L has completed the initial copy and has entered asynchronous mirroring mode. Drive D is about 60% done. We've completed step three, which is protecting the Windows SQL database drives D and L. Step four is to protect the Linux data mount point, which is dev slash SDB. Back to the main page, click Data Sources, MTDI Software, MTDI Agents, and open the Linux host. Click the red menu and select Insert New MTDI Devices. Insert the SDB device which has the data mount point. Open up the CDM page and create a new CDM policy. Give it a name, a description, and select Asynchronous Mode. Add the SDB disk to the policy. Enable the five actions. And activate the policy. The disk is now performing its initial copy to CPC. And here's the dirty map. Here is a display of the I.O. flow showing that each new write is being sent to the primary storage at the left here and to the backup, which is the CPC mirror disk. And step four is done. Now both policies are actively protecting every write to the data disks at the primary site. So let's take a look at the snapshots at the CPC instance. Here's the Windows protection policy, and here's a list of snapshots. Any one of these can be used for DR testing or even DR activation or for just copying back a few deleted files. Let's also look at the Linux protection policy. Here's a list of snapshots. Note the retention period, expiration countdown timer, and block level changes between each snapshot point. Let's perform a DR test. Step one is to create a disk clone using one of the snapshot points or a CDP point in time. The DR test does not affect the primary data center operation, nor the data protection policies. iSCSI is used to connect the clone from the CPC target ports to the recovery host initiators. To do this, we go to the CDM policy and launch TimeWalker. Select Clone Data Images and select the disk to be cloned. We can make a selection using the snapshots or pick a spot from the CDP journal for any point in time recovery. Here's the visual representation of the I.O. intensity in a timeline, allowing you to select any point in time for creating the clone. 
you can select a range of time to zoom in and zoom in again and again until you're at the individual right level. This is the maximum zoom level, showing individual rights to the disk. For a DR test, we simply use a point in time snapshot. So let's pick this one at 1530. Select the option to present the clone to the DR host using iSCSI. The AWS CentOS 7 host is pre-configured with the iSCSI protocol and the PostgreSQL database application already set up and ready to verify the data. Let's go to the SSH session for this AWS Linux instance. Run the rescan command to discover the new disk, and we see that two CDSI Phoenix disks have been discovered. These are the multipath devices from CPC. The lsblk command now shows SDA and SDB are part of the mpathb device. The multipath-l command shows that both paths are running and dm-0 is the block device. We now mount the dev dm-0 to the dbadmin slash data directory and start up the database. Open up a web browser and connect to this AWS Linux instance. We see that the database web page is up and it has 2200 records. This concludes the DR test. To clean up, simply delete the clones and perform a rescan at the host. The next test is DR activation. This test is almost identical to the DR test, except that the on premises data center must shut down all production instances so they won't conflict with the AWS DR instances. Step two is to use TimeWalker to create and attach the clone disk to each host using the latest snapshot or to pick a CDP journal point in time. The DR hosts can start up once the iSCSI disks are online. The entire process, including the on-demand creation of the DR hosts, can be automated using Terraform and other automation tools. CPC is also 100% manageable through REST API. When the primary data center can resume normal operations, we need to copy back the data from the CPC AWS instance back to the on-premises data center. Cirrus Migrate Cloud is the best migration tool for this purpose. Step one, we'll deploy the CMC agent at each of the on-premises hosts and the AWS recovery hosts. This can be accomplished without any downtime and is a single line deployment similar to the CPC MTDI agent deployment shown earlier. Step two is to register each host with the CMC portal. This is a migration as a service platform that simplifies and automates online low impact migration from anywhere to anywhere. Once the registration has completed, the CMC portal will be able to manage the source and destination hosts using secured outbound only connections. No application data is ever transferred to the CMC management portal. The CMC tool then creates the host-to-host -host secured connection so that each source destination host pair is connected through secure TCP IP sessions. The connection is one way, requiring only one side to open up an inbound connection. For this scenario, it's much easier to modify the inbound rules of the AWS instance's security group to allow an inbound connection from a known IP. Once the host-to-host -host connections are defined, we can then create migration sessions to migrate all the data disks from AWS back to the on-premises data center. The data transfer protocol is the same as the MTDI, which is an optimized TCP IP protocol with data reduction and encryption. When the initial sync is complete, we're ready to cut over the workload back to the on-premises data center. The migration sessions are triggered to enter the CMotion state. In this state, I.O. at the AWS host is redirected to the destination disks. This makes the transition of workload back to the destination a well-coordinated event for all hosts and eliminates any unpredictable final sync of the disks. Once all hosts are at the CMotion state, we're ready for the final cutover. And that's step six. CMC continues to redirect the I.O. and the destination disks are unlocked for access. The final cutover is complete after the AWS host applications are offline, the destination disks are online, 
and the application at the on-premises data center is started up. The total downtime in this process is the gap between shutting down the app at AWS and then bringing the apps at the data center online, which can be just seconds. And finally, we can remove the CMC agents at each host. The CPC MTDI agents are reactivated and the source disks are once again mirrored to the CPC AWS instance. This concludes the recovery process using CMC. For more video demonstrations of CMC in action, migrating from on-premises to cloud, cloud to cloud, or within on-premises without downtime, please visit our website at cirrusdata.com.